Hi everybody, my name is Manuel Amunategui, and I'm going to be talking about predicting hospital readmissions. So before I start, I'd like to thank Carolyn and Bellevue Community College for uh, inviting us to present our work. Uh, it's always a uh, pleasure to, uh, to share uh, what we've done and what we're working on, and I also want to thank everybody for listening. Thanks again. So over the next half hour, I'm going to be talking about data science at Providence, the readmission problem. We're going to review a checklist readmission model. So this is kind of a, 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 a model uh, that can be run using a pen and paper or even mentally uh, to quickly uh, get a probability of uh, uh, readmission. And a brief look at a more complex model, something that cannot be run on a pen and paper. It needs a computer. Um, so that we're on the same page. Uh, when, I'm, uh, when I say readmission, I'm talking about a patient that was hospitalized and discharged that has to be readmitted, has to return to the hospital for an issue related uh, to their original admission. So uh, uh, a complication, a side effect, whatever. Um, it's kind of a continuation of the original problem. And we're going to define this uh, in, in stricter terms uh, in the next few slides. So. I work for Providence Health and Services. It's the third uh, largest not-for-profit health system in the United States. It uh, operates in five states, California, Oregon, Washington, Montana, and Alaska. It has uh, 35 hospitals and almost or around 400 clinics. That number uh, keeps growing, so it's hard to keep track. And all of this is uh, integrated on an EMR, on an electronic medical records. So that means one thing, we have huge amounts of data. And that brings me to my role. I'm a data scientist for the healthcare intelligence team. And this is a role that is a bit hard to define. On one end of the spectrum, you have uh, the, the knowledge expert that's working on genomic data. And the other end of the spectrum, you have the Java developer working on Hadoop and dealing with big data problems. Most of us are somewhere in the middle, and the role is often uh, shown uh, with a Venn diagram, uh, an intersecting Venn diagram, uh, and that's because it's a, it's a role that's made up of other uh, classical roles. Uh, the size of the circle also represents the time spent in the, uh, on the job. Uh, unfortunately, most of my time is spent programming and cleaning data, and the uh, least amount is spent on statistical analysis and modeling, which, you know, coming up with your, your, your conclusions, which is the funnest part. That said, I highly recommend this role for, for those who are interested in it, especially in healthcare. It's a, a growing field. Uh, we have access to data that we didn't have uh, even a few years ago, and we have access to a lot of it. Uh, for my desk in um, in Portland, Oregon, it's now easy for me to to get the the utilization of an operating room in Los Angeles and compare it to one in Anchorage, Alaska, just using a SQL a SQL a simple SQL select statement. And this used to, uh, might not have been possible a few years ago, and it may have been and certainly was a lot harder if it was possible. So I highly recommend uh, this work. So let's get into the readmission issue. Uh, the next few slides are from CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And um, here, let's read a few of these. Nearly one in five fee-for-service Medicare patients returns to the hospital within 30 days of being discharged, uh, and two million readmissions each year. So these are large numbers. Uh, it, they estimate that it costs them $26 billion per year, and $17 billion, uh, basically um, you know, two-thirds of that, are potentially avoidable. And this one's important. A high readmission rate can be an indicator of poor quality. And you know, yes, it is. It prob probably is, though you can't generalize, but in some cases it is. Um, here are the 30-day the, the, the readmission rates. So uh, we are going to focus on the 30-day readmission rates, and you're going to see why very shortly. So over the past years, it was the, the, that 30-day that, that readmission rate was at 19%. And it's a bit, the chart is a bit misleading because it starts at 16% instead of 0%. So it's not that dramatic of a de decline. But uh, the, in the past two years, it's been going down. It's been, you know, it's gone down a, a whole percent. And, um, uh, this is, and that's the point of the chart. Something has changed in the past two years. And what has changed is CMS has started to impose penalties. 
So this year, we're at 2% penalty for heart attacks, heart failures, and pneumonias. So CMS has done its research, and they deem that anything in those three problem areas, uh, excessive readmissions should be fined because they uh, should be penalized um, uh, because they shouldn't happen that often. So uh, and next year, it's going up to 3%, and they're adding uh, hip knee arthroplasty and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease to the list. So the list is growing, and the penalties are growing. Uh, again, this is very high level. Um, if you want the details, you know, I recommend going to the CMS site. You'll find you know, huge amounts of material on the subject. There are exceptions. There are thresholds you can't pass. There, there are a lot of different uh, you know, uh, rules. It's a, it's a complicated thing. But on a high level, uh, it's costing these penalties are costing a hospital huge amounts of money. So we're all now scrambling, trying to figure out how to, how best to, you know, um, uh, lower this, these readmissions. So how is Providence doing? Well, we're doing pretty well. For 2013, we had an admission rate of around 8%. And it's hard to, to, to pinpoint that number precisely because, you know, you have penalized readmissions, non-penalized readmissions, over the threshold, etc. You also have... Um, uh, it may not be a fair comparison with other institutions that may be more uh, that may do more work in in readmission prone areas than than we do. But either way, we're happy. You know that our numbers are are below these national averages. But uh, is that good enough? Of course not. Uh, you know there's still a huge amount of readmissions, and you know uh, we need to curtail those. We need to lower those numbers. So one area where uh, there's been a lot of work and has proved promising, and we're going to see a lot of uh, work in the future as well, is transitional care. Transitional care is, is an intervention that happens during the admission and after the admission. So it starts with a patient engagement, and it's usually uh, around educating the patient with, uh, uh, to talk about their condition, what happened, and what, what work was done at the hospital. So not only you know, preventing it in the future, and also uh, um, you know, knowing how to um, to manage, you know, the medication. You know, if there's a involved with the wound, taking care of the wound, uh, etc. And for those who are at a higher risk of readmission, who have a history of not, you know, of having problems following the instructions or taking their meds, uh, uh, there's a post-discharge outreach, and that could include, you know, telephone calls all the way to home visits. I think um, hospitals are finding it is cheaper to to assign case managers to these people than you know having them being readmitted uh you know and 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 that's not just in the readmission issue they're finding in a lot of cases like especially when there's um excessive use of the emergency department they, they start assigning these to case managers to kind of you know help them out and 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 so 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 they don't abuse the the, the emergency department uh, so one area that that's very promising to help these intervention as well as um uh you know the 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 overall uh, uh admission process is um, uh, using predictive analytics to assign a probability, a risk score uh, on a patient of whether they are high risk of being readmitted or not. And um, so that we're all also, so for those who don't have much background in predictive analytics, uh, uh, these models, these predictive models are only as good as the historical data they have, okay? So if you don't have data on uh, on a problem, then you're not going to be able to use a model to help you out, right? You need to have enough data to find patterns and enough data where you can tie in the final outcome. So in our case, our final outcome is whether they are going to be readmitted under 30 days or not. So we need to have um, enough data. So here, this is an interesting slide uh, from a collaboration between Advocate Health and Cerner. And it kind of shows the, the, the breadth of, uh, of variables that can go into a 30-day readmission model. Basically, uh, it's a very complicated uh, uh, issue, and uh, basically anything under the sun can go into the model and probably has some form of an effect of whether a patient will be readmitted or not. So you start with you know your demographics data, um, such as age, gender, you know, uh, you know your employment history, you know your income. Your entire uh, medical story can go in, future and present, uh, past and present. Um, and even environmental factors. You know, are you in a, uh, a neighborhood with crime or no crime? Do you have access to public transportation? Do you have access to food? Uh, all these kind of things. Um, so they all feed into this 30-day readmission. Uh, and there are plenty of models out there, uh, hundreds of models. 
uh, this the Lace Index is probably the most famous. It came out uh, from um, it came out from Canada uh, in 2010, and it's very simple. You know, it uses just a handful of variables. Today it may be a bit dated, and it's used also as a benchmark for newer models. Um, and here are a few, uh, I just list two more. Uh, one from Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, apparently they come out with a lot of models because the model we're going to look at today is also from Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, it's called the Hospital Score for 30-Day uh, Potentially Avoidable Readmissions. And I think this is very appropriate for, for this presentation because it's a simple uh, uh, model. It's, uh, it uses basic uh, EMR uh, variables, so they should be easy to get. And um, it can be run mentally or with a pen and paper. You basically you calculate the points, and then depending on the, the total point you end up with, you, uh, you determine, actually we can see the next slide, talks about it, you determine the, the risk of the patients for being readmitted. So between zero and four, it's a low risk, and seven or, or higher is a high risk for being readmitted. So let's look at those. We're gonna we're gonna actually gonna build this in R right now. We're gonna spend five minutes doing that. Um, so let's look at the variables we're gonna be using in this model. So low hemoglobin level at discharge. It has to be under 12 grams per deciliter. And we're gonna pull this one out uh, our complete blood count um, uh, table. It has a huge amount of um, of data, and we're just gonna in this case we're just gonna look at the hemoglobin level, though it has a lot of other interesting things. The second one is discharge from an oncology service. So I'm going to cheat. There's probably a better way to do this, let's say. I'm going to get the hospital department name, and if it includes the word oncology, I'm going to assign it a 1. If it doesn't, I'll assign it a 0. The third variable is the, uh, the sodium level, a low sodium level. So here again, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to use a, the, the comprehensive metabolic panel test and just pull the sodium level. And we're looking at anything under um, 135 milliequivalents per liter. The fourth variable is uh, the quantity of procedures during the, the patient's visit. So uh, we're going to tally all the ICD-9 codes. The fifth variable is the uh, whether the admission type was non-elective. So you'll see we have a, a, an admit type uh, variable in our database, and it includes all these uh, possibilities. So basically, if it's elective, we're going to say 0, and we're going to consider everything else non-elective and assign it a 1. That's how we're going to build that point system there. The sixth variable is the number of hospital admissions during the previous year. So this is, this is a, uh, an interesting variable because it's a historical variable. It's not looking at the, the admission, it's looking at the history uh, of utilization. So um, over the past year. We have three variables that hold that kind of information. We have the uh, hospitalized in the emergency department, the emergency to inpatient, and directly as an inpatient. So we're just going to tally all three, take the total of all of these, to get the, the, the total number of hospital admissions. And finally, the length of stay, we have a variable that's uh, you know called the original length of stay for that admission, and we're just going to copy that. So we're now going to um, build this model, build a hospital score model in R. We're going to grab all the seven variables, find them uh, in our data, and uh, run it through a model. One caveat is uh, we're not going to use the point system of the uh, of the original model just for for um, speed and uh, ease. We're just going to use a binary. Whether it ha the person has a low hemoglobin, we'll assign a one, or or whether they don't, we'll assign it to zero. So we'll just go with a binary variable. And but this should give you a taste of the kind of work I do every day and the kind of tools I use to get that work done. So R is, a, is an open source statistical language. It's a great tool. It's used by, by practically everybody. Facebook, Google, um, you know, all the Bing, all the big names use it. It has huge amount of support on the internet, huge amount of documentation and, and training tools. You know, you may have talked about it in class. Um, it also um, uh, is entirely free. And basically anything uh, in a statistical world that you can imagine, you can do it with R. So I now open the R IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. This is called R Studio. It's also free, just like the R language. And um, I'm going to kind of zoom in so we can actually see things better. And R is an interpreted language. So I can just highlight things and run them. 
it's not a compiled language. So what I already did is I loaded a data set of um, uh, uh, p uh, patients that were admitted uh, in 2013. So I have probably a sample of 250 uh, uh, thousand uh, observations, so 250 thousand admits, um, and this just contains the, the patient encounter and uh, a result whether they were afterwards readmitted or not, and after how many days were they readmitted. Okay, so I already have that loaded in memory, and now we're going to load the hemoglobin level. So I'm going to pull simply highlight what I want to run and run it. So now it's reading it. It takes just, uh, it's, a, it's very short. There we have everything. And let's take a peek at what we have, just so you have an idea of what is in this file. And there you see, there are a, a huge amount of numerical data that represents the, uh, unfortunately it's in the scientific notation, hard to read, but it represents um, the um, uh, the the hemoglobin level, right? We're only interested in uh, hemoglobin levels under 12 gram per deciliter. So we're going to call this function. If else that value is under 12, we're going to give it a 1. If it's over 12 or equal to 12, we're going to give it a 0. So I'm going to run that. And let's see what it returns. And I'm also assigning it to a new variable. So don't, don't sweat the details here. Just look at the the overall process here. So now we have it. Instead of a, a, an actual numerical data value, we have a binary, a true/false. So we know that these two, for example, admissions were uh, had a low level of hemoglobin. And and afterwards, I just this is just part of cleaning uh, that variable up and then merging it, kind of like you would do a join in SQL to the uh, original data set where I have my patient data. Okay. Now that's done. We're going to load the second variable uh, is on oncology discharge. So I'm going to use a function called grepl and it's going to look through the hospital department name and if it finds the word oncology we'll assign it a 1. If not we assign it a 0. And again I'm assigning all that to a new variable called is oncology discharge. The, so the, the, the sodium level is a bit the same thing as we did for the hemoglobin so I'm just going to run the code again. The procedure count, um, uh, we have, um, I have a file of all the, we, I, I tallied all the ICD-9 codes, and we're simply going to load the file and then merge it back to, um, merge it back to the data set. One interesting thing is if it's an NA, meaning it's not available, I'm going to just assume there was at least one, one uh, procedure done. Now, we talked about the admit type, so everything that's elective we consider a 0, and everything else is a 1. We consider non-elective, and that's what we're after, the 1. So let's make sure we're running everything here. Finally, the, the number of admissions, again, we're going to tally the, the uh, emergency department, emergency department to inpatient and inpatient, and assign it to the hospital admission count, and a final variable is the original as a stay. So we're just basically transferring one value to another. Oh, an interesting thing here, an interesting, uh, let me just run this before I forget here. An interesting thing here about um, about operations in R, they're all what's called vector-based. So you can uh, do uh, uh, simple mathematics with columns of data. So basically I'm adding variables of, I'm, I'm, I'm basically doing, you know, add this column plus this column plus this column and assign it to a new column. So it's all vector based. So you can do, instead of just number of uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, you can do columns of data admissions and, and subtractions. It's all what's called vector math, right? It's pretty cool. So our outcome variable is called readmit lag, okay? This is basically the lag, the amount of days uh, uh, it took for them to be readmitted, if they even got readmitted. So let's see how it looks currently. This is very important because we're here we're going to be building our target variable. And target variable means, you know, it's also called a dependent variable, uh, uh, you know, your, your outcome variable. It goes by a lot of names. But here you see this patient was readmitted after 347 days. This one right here, after three days. This one, 
not available, meaning they never were readmitted, okay? So that's the, what the data looks like. So we're going to start with, with saying that anything that's NA, not available, we can assume they never got readmitted. So they got they they got they were cured. They went to the, the hospital. They were cured and they left and everything is fine. Now let's see what we have. So now instead of the NAs, as you see, we have a bunch of zeros and still some numbers. So now we have to keep only the numbers between one and thirty because those are the readmissions that we're targeting. Everything else is a zero. So I'm going to call this. This line that basically takes any value in readmit lag, if it's between 1 and 30, give it a 1. Anything else is a 0. So let's see what we have. And there you, there you have it. It's a very clean uh, uh, binary file. Uh, and this is what we're going to, this is very important because this, this outcome variable is what's going to tell the model uh, how to uh, uh, find its patterns. So whenever it sees an observation, basically, a row with the seven variables from the hospital score model and if it's followed by a readmit lag of one it knows that this patient was readmitted within our parameters and if it's a zero it knows that the patient was not readmitted and that's going to allow it to find patterns to differentiate basically between these two levels so it can then subsequently predict uh, using a uh, you know a, a, a test set that does not have uh, the outcome uh, assigned to it. So um, this is just cleaning the data set so we only have what we need. And that's not this. I'm just assigning the predictor names. Basically, everything except the readmit lag is a predictor. And now, um, 101 on modeling, we need to, in order to, um, to train and test uh, a model, you need to give it a training data set and a testing data set. So here we only have one data set. So we're going to call the the split function. We're going to we're going to take we're going to basically split it. Uh, we're going to take 70% of uh, our data set and give it to the training data set and the the, the subsequent 30% we're going to give it to our testing data set. And all this is going to be sample. So we're going to basically uh, uh, randomize the order. And then we're going to feed everything to our model. So uh, uh, you know, I don't want to go into any depth about the model itself, except it's a, a classification-based model, and it's called XGBoost, and it actually is uh, written by a current graduate student at the University of Washington, and it's a fantastic model, so I'm very thankful for his work. And I'm going to highlight this area, and it's super fast. So um, I'm telling it, uh, use the XGBoost model, use this training data set, you know, and 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 do your magic basically learn uh that's, yeah basically oh I might, have, I might have forgotten to run this so let me do this there clear that and then we're going to do this again so now we're running the model and there it's super fast it was you know practically instantaneous it ran through 250,000 rows of data with seven you know seven uh, features so now the model has uh, trained itself how to uh, predict uh, probability of readmission based on those seven variables. So let's see how well it did. So now we call the predict function and we pass it the model we just created, the readmission model, and we pass also the testing data set. So the second, the, the, the second portion of the data we created earlier. And let's run that. And now we have a series of predictions. So the best way to see how we did is using the AUC score. The AUC score is called the area under the curve and it's based on the receiver operating characteristic. We're going to see a little bit more about this in a minute, but it's a very convenient way of quickly seeing how well a model does. Interestingly, this actually takes a lot more time to, to figure out than um, training the model itself. And we got an AUC score of 0 0.701. And you know what? If I minimize this, we can actually get a, get a, um, get a little chart here. And there it is. This is the same chart uh, that I pulled from R and brought it back into the PowerPoint presentation. So this is an area under the curve of 0 0.07. So what does that mean? So the first thing you should imagine is a square around that curve. So 0.7, sorry, not this, did I say 0 0.07, I meant 0 0.7. Um, 0 0.7 
means this area. So that's what uh, 0.7 represents uh, in this square. A model that is completely random, that is garbage, you can't do any worse, is 0.5. So it's not an empty square. It's actually a the entire. It's basically a straight line on the diagonal, and it and it contains everything underneath it. A model that that is perfect, you can't do any better. It predicts things 100% uh, correctly every time is the entire area. And it would be an AUC of 1. So our model has 0.7. And in healthcare, usually, a great model is somewhere, you know, 0.85. And a good model is 0.75. Again, this is an entire, this is a gross generalization because there's some areas that are very hard to predict and others that are a lot easier. But overall, this model did 0.7. So it's a phenomenal model considering it, uh, uh, it can be run by, uh, you know, using a pen and paper and just a handful of variables. So it's really powerful in that way that, uh, uh, you know, even somebody who's good with numbers could run it in their head. Um, uh, it's very powerful in that way. So before we leave this, uh, this model, I would like to mention um, I ran the same model, uh, the hospital score model, with a linear model. And I looked at the variable importance. This is kind of the, the poor person's coefficient analysis. It basically tells you what the model thought were the most important variables to come with its best prediction. And what's important here is, uh, you know, the first variable is, is uh, whether it's an oncology discharge. The second variable, this is what I want to bring your attention to, is hospital admission count. And the least importance is the length of stay. Now I ran the same model using a classification-based model, okay, not a linear model. Again, we see hospital admission count is, is high up there. So we know this is from two separate models. Uh, it's important. But look at this. What's very interesting is the second variable is length of stay. And if you look in the previous model, the linear model, it was the least important. Does that mean one model is right or wrong? Absolutely not. They're both correct. What that means is that you could take the average of two of two of these models and get a lot stronger model. And you know that you know you could take ten different models and average them all together, and you're going to get more and more precise um, idea of what's important to predict readmissions and what isn't. And that's what's important with um, uh, not using a single model because you may discard some variables that would be very important using different types of model. Linear and classification models work differently. Look at the data differently, and you know. Um, come up with different conclusions. Okay, so we ran, uh, this is the current model we're running here at Providence uh, uh, on the healthcare intelligence team. Um, and it comes with an 8.8 uh, .8 AUC score, so a lot higher. Uh, that said, the difference with this model is you cannot run, you cannot figure this one out with a piece of pen, a pen and paper. It requires uh, a computer. It has uh, between, it's been run between 500 and uh, 3,000 variables. So uh, definitely nothing you can do mentally. So like with the, the hospital score model, I ran the complex model and uh, through a classification model and pulled the variable importance. So this, these are all the variables the model thought were the most important in order to predict uh, readmissions. Um, and we're actually going to go through them in detail because it's interesting to find out what the model thought was important. The utilization counts turn out to be a very important uh, predictor. Uh, that includes total hospital admissions, total contact with uh, with the hospital, total hospitalization inpatient, and a number of procedures. So um, all of these turn out to be critical for the model. Uh, um, about medications, uh, also regarding counts, the number of suspended medications historically, and um, the number of uh, prescribed medication not being taken historically as well. Uh, regarding the admission and discharge, the original length of stay was important. The discharge position, the oncology discharge, whether they were I'm sorry, whether they were um, discharged from the oncology department, the department, and the admit type, whether elective, not elective. Two disease came came as important for the 2013 data set: the kidney and neoplasm. Uh, financial data, uh, whether the patient has a balance or not, and the credit score of the patient. And the demographics, the age was very important, marital status, alcohol use, and whether, this is an interesting one, whether or not they had a cell phone or listed a cell phone, turned out to be an important predictor. Environmental variables, you have the distance between the, the home and the hospital, the, the patient's address and, and the hospital. Uh, whether they have access to grocery stores, the distance to libraries, and the 2010 census data was important as well. 
um, historical data uh, from flow sheets. Flow sheets is a big area in um, in our database where we hold our vitals, so you know pulse, these, that kind of data. The the the, the weight scale, uh, the historical uh, weight was important, and uh, the rating, the risk of fall rating was important. So that's all I have. I hope that gave you a, a taste of the, the type of work I do uh, as a data scientist at Providence. Um, I put my email address if you have uh, questions. Uh, please don't hesitate to, um, to ask them. I'll be happy to, to, to attempt to, um, to answer them. So thanks again for, for your attention and uh, you know, best of luck on your studies and in your career. Thank you very much.